in scenario two, that's try to address the issue here because this is the bottleneck link where the delay came from mostly. And uh, let's blow it up a hundred times. How about that? So using a fatter excess link there. The result is that the excess link utilization is also reduced a hundred times. Less than 1% utilization, you can imagine the queuing delay being very, very short. That brings uh, this component of the delay down to milliseconds. Now, why millisecond? If you recall trace route testings that we did earlier in chapter one, right? Um, what was that? Uh, quiz three or quiz four, isn't it? Yeah, most of the delay we see between two routers are what? Tens milliseconds and maybe a hundred millisecond at most. So if there's not gonna be much queuing delay, yeah, the delay is at this scale. So two seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, which of these three components dominates? Obviously, two. And from scenario one, we have minutes of delay to scenario two. We effectively bring down the total delay. All right, great. Hmm. Is there any catch? If you think about it, hey, bringing the excess link capacity up 100%, that uh, is actually not cheap. So increasing excess link speed, no, no, not cheap. You need to purchase the new cables, of course, but you might also need to do groundwork, okay? Uh, remove the old cables, install new ones. Just think about the labor cost there. And in addition to that, you might need to upgrade the routers there connecting the high-speed link just so that uh, you can accommodate um, potential traffic volume. So, yeah, very costly. Now in scenario three, let's see if we could introduce something else instead of blowing up the capacity in the bottleneck link. 